Good morning. I'm Mrs. Julia, Grade 10 Guidance Counselor. This morning I'm going to speak to you regarding the option advice for students in Grade 10 entering Grade 11 in 2022-2023. Before I continue with the option um, portion selection, I'm going to ask Mr. Joven Angeli, our Specialist High Skills Major Counselor, um, to speak to you regarding the SHSM program. Good morning, everyone. I am Mr. Jovan Angeli, and I am the Specialist High Skills Major Program Teacher here at STM, otherwise known as SHSM or SHISM. Why SHISM? Well, are you a student who has no idea or are not sure on what you want to do after high school? SHISM. Are you a student who thinks they know what they want to do after high school? SHISM. Are you a student who does know what they want to do after high school? Great. Shism, get used to hearing about this program, as this program will not only help you focus and better prepare for your next steps after high school, but it will also give you an extra edge on the competition you will be facing in the future, whether it be going to college, university, or the workplace. This program really is a no-brainer. It allows you to pick courses that you are already interested in. It requires you to, to complete a two-credit co-op which gives you invaluable experience in helping you figure out what you want to do after high school. And all of you should really consider taking co-op. And SHISM also offers you free training and certificates that will look amazing on your resume, like first aid and CPR. At STM, there are six different SHISM sectors that are available to you. They include the art and culture sector, which involve taking courses in drama, music, visual arts, photography, and communication technology. There is the business sector, which includes taking courses in accounting, business leadership, computer science, entrepreneurship, law, and marketing. There is the construction sector, involves taking courses in construction technology, exploring computer engineering, manufacturing technology, physics, technological design, and transportation technology. The nonprofit sector, includes courses like geography, history, law, political science, family studies, raising and caring for children, philosophy, world religion, international business, and fundamentals in business leadership. The transportation sector, which includes transportation technology, technological design, computer science, environmental science, and physics. And finally, the health and wellness sector, which includes courses in biology, chemistry, healthcare, fitness, kinesiology, food and nutrition, healthy active living, and raising and caring for children. Oh, as you can see, these are many sectors included here, and hopefully one of these interests connect with one of yours. In order to complete the SHISM program, you would have to take, like I said, co-op, a two-credit co-op. You all should strongly consider doing this. It is the best way to find out what you want to do, and again, it looks great on a resume. You will also be taking various certifications, uh, including CPR training and first aid. Many of the certifications you need for SHISM, you would take through co-op. So if you are taking co-op, SHISM is a must. And you would need to take a group to four to five, grade 11 and 12 courses, just like the ones I stated before, related to your sector. These would be called major courses. If you are interested in pursuing a career in any of these sectors, whether your next step after high school is college, university, apprenticeship, or the workplace, you should consider registering into SHISM. Not sure on what sector? No problem. Another nice thing about this program is that if you change your mind about the sector you want to go into, you can easily change your SHISM sector. If you are able to complete the program requirements by the time you graduate, your diploma will include the Specialist High Skills Major Red Seal in recognition of your accomplishment, and you will be acknowledged at your graduation ceremony as well. But there are other benefits of the program. In addition to helping you plan for your future, as mentioned, it's a great resume builder, helping you separate yourself from others in future competition. And there are universities and colleges that already offer SISM scholarships and bursaries, like Western, Mac, Guelph, York, Lakehead Universities, and Niagara, St. Clair, Loyalist, and St. Clair Colleges. And this list grows every year. How to enroll? One way is through my blueprint. Through my blueprint, you can explore the SHISM program and express interest. When you are on your high school planning page, 
Keep scrolling until you find the SHSM Planner. Click on it. From there, you can explore all six sectors that we have here at STM and all the courses and certificates available for you to choose from to earn your SHSM. Once you are enrolled, you will also be able to track your progress using the SHSM Planner on my blueprint. Another way to register is to come see me, Mr. Joe Angeli, or one of your fabulous guidance counselors in the guidance office. Either way, it's easy. Once you have signed up, I will be assisting you throughout the entire process. Success is not an accident. It is a combination of hard work, commitment, and preparation. One of my favorite sayings is, if you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Well, this program is designed to help you prepare for your future. And the best part is all the certificates and training are free through the SHSM program. Again, this program involves taking co-op. If you're taking co-op, this is a must for you to sign up. And if you're not taking co-op, you should strongly reconsider, as not only will it help you gain valuable experience in your potential area of interest, it will also help you figure out what you want to do after high school. And, of course, it will help you enroll into this program. So, head over to the SISM Planner in my blueprint, or come see me or your guidance counselors in guidance for information. And lastly, I will be visiting your grade 10 career and civics classes where you'll have an opportunity to ask further questions you may have. STM, those are all of your announcements. I believe I'm ending it off, is that correct? No, that's wrong on the prompter, that's okay. Scratch that. Good luck in planning, great tens. Again, I hope to see you soon, and I ask Ms. Julia to come back to the podium. <laughs> all right, thank you so much, Mr. Jovenangeli, and uh, some valuable, very valuable information. I hope that you come see us. Um, there are so many great things about SHSM. All right, we are going to get started with our uh, option presentation regarding um, your course selections going into grade 11. So some things are different for you. Um, there are five different streams now that can be studied in grade 11. You're going to look at the fifth digit of the course code, which identifies the stream. So for instance, as you can see there on the screen, uh, in grade 11 now, you will be able to choose uh, from the university pathway, um, there's mixed level courses, college level courses, E for employment and workplace, as well as open. Uh, in grades nine and 10, you didn't have all these options. However, you need to make sure that you have the correct prerequisites in order to take the courses at the university level. So if you are considering going into the university um, pathway, then D would be uh, the level that you were at in grade 10. If you are considering taking mixed level courses, then you can go into that stream from the academic or applied level. If you are considering going into college, then the applied level course stream is where you would be coming from and locally developed courses from grade 9 and 10 will lead you to workplace or as you see there E. This year things are a little bit different in terms of your course selection. You will be using My Blueprint. In order to find My Blueprint you're going to log in to your My Site account and you're going to look for the blue icon that you see on the screen there uh, which is for My Blueprint. Once you are in the My Blueprint um, screen, you're going to go to the dashboard and you're going to click on High School. It will open up the page where you can plan, plan and add your courses. So your screen will look like this. It's, it's actually quite user friendly. You will be able to add courses for next year by just clicking on the plus symbol. Once you click on the plus symbol, it will open up a drop down menu with course selections for you. You'll notice that the, um, the chart will already be pre filled with the compulsory religion, math, and English sections. Um, however, you will have your choice of electives. Once you are in that screen, please be sure to read the descriptors and look for any prerequisites you may need to take the courses. You'll notice that you get the description of the course that you've just clicked on 
And right below it, it'll say prerequisites um, so that it's all right there for you, okay? You're also going to be asked to choose two alternative courses. And this is in case there's a conflict and we cannot accommodate um, all of your choices. So please make sure that you do fill in the alternate courses as it will make um, things a lot easier and you'll have a better chance of actually getting the elective courses that you're interested in taking. A step-by-step -step guide has also been included for you uh, in the yellow package that you have received from your teacher this morning. Please refer to that step-by-step -step guide as it gives you all of the details in terms of how you can access um, my blueprint and work through the course selection process. Okay, so for grade 11, you'll notice that things are a bit different in terms of how many electives you get to choose. In grade 11, you will have the opportunity to choose five electives. So you have quite a bit of choice this year. In grade 11, there are three compulsory courses you must take, and that will be the religion, English, and math. Now, which math you choose to take will depend on your post-secondary destination. If you take a look at the screen, for students who are university bound and are considering entering engineering, business, or science, um, it is recommended for you to take the MCR3U. That is the grade 11 functions, which leads you then to the grade 12 functions and possibly the calculus if you need it. If you are college bound and considering entering technology or the trades, uh, it is recommended that you take the mixed level math, that is the MCF3M, as that is the prerequisite for the grade 12 MCT4C. The MCT4C is required in many cases for technology and trades programs at the college level. If you are college bound, not looking at technology or the trades, um, you would be okay to take the college level math, that's the MBF3C. And if you have been taking the L level math and are employment bound, uh, you can continue with that stream, the employment stream, and take the MEL3E. Uh, this year for you, things will be a little bit different in terms of English. When you are looking to choose your English courses, uh, you'll notice that the course codes have changed. It will no longer be ENG3U, 3C, or 3E. You will now be looking for the NBE3U for university, NBE3C for college level English, and NBE3E for the employment workplace level English. The Ministry of Education has made some changes to the English curriculum for grade 11, um, and it will be a First Nations focus. As a result, those course codes have changed in order to accommodate that change. Next, you might be asking yourself, am I on track to graduate? Well, my blueprint offers you um, a great way to look at where you are with your courses. Uh, you can look for the graduation indicator, which allows you to review your graduation summary. Um, just click on view progress and you will be able to see your own personalized chart. Um, it will show you what you have earned to date uh, in terms of your compulsory credits and your elective credits. If you're unsure of how to read this, please book an appointment with me and we can review it together. I'm happy to do that with you. Some students ask, should I reach ahead in grade 11? So you might be thinking about taking grade 12 courses. If you are considering this, please know that the Ministry of Education requires something that's called full disclosure of all grade 11 and grade 12 final marks. Basically what this means that all attempts will appear on your transcript. So please make sure that you're prepared to take the courses that you are thinking of taking um, in terms of reaching ahead. Consider your destination when you're making your choices. If you are university bound, I said this before, you're going to be choosing mostly from the university or mixed level course selection. 
college bound, you'd be choosing from the M mixed or college level courses, but you can still take some university level um, courses. Workplace bound, you, you have the option as well if you would like to try some work experience. You might look at the GLD or GLN, which is more of a supported type of co-op course. Um, and that would be useful for you if you'd like to go into the workplace, but maybe are feeling a little bit unsure and would like some additional support. And if you are apprenticeship bound, it is a very good idea to be taking co-op in grade 11, as by the time you're in grade 12, you could be registered as an OYAP student with our Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program. So what are the university requirements? I'm thinking about going to university, how do I start planning? A very, very good place to start is at www.ontariouniversitiesinfo.ca. This is a great program um, that gives you an overview of all of the programs that are offered at our universities uh, in Ontario. Um, in order to qualify and be eligible to apply to university, you will have to have U-level courses or mixed-level courses. In grade 12, you will need to have six U or M-level courses in order to be eligible. Now, it's not just enough to have those courses. Most universities require a minimum average um, above 75, okay? Some more competitive programs might require 90% to be eligible to apply. It is very, very important that we look at those university requirements, the prerequisites, um, and get to know what the admission averages are um, so that you can see what is expected of you for those programs. If you are college bound, you will need C-level courses. It is a little bit different in the sense that a cumulative average is not necessarily required for college uh, level programs. If you're interested in pursuing a program in college, you are advised to go to www.ontariocolleges.ca where you can check all of the college programs and what those prerequisites are. Something that's a little bit different with colleges now is collaborative programs, which are in combination with universities. It's so important to check the prerequisites for these programs because you might actually find that you're interested in a college program, but it does require U-level courses. Again, this is why we really need to plan ahead and look at those prerequisites ahead of time. Same with transfer opportunities. Some colleges do have transfer agreements with different universities, and you might find that that's the best path for you. Perhaps you don't wanna to go to university right out of high school, and you wanna to go to college first and then transfer to a university program. Again, we need to check those prerequisites to make sure that you have the correct courses for those programs. So as I said, proper planning is so important. It is essential for your academic success. Um, please refer to your My Blueprint where you can access your individual pathway plan. Also, consider what you have already studied in your career class, if you've already taken career studies. Um, if not, then, you know, I, I know that's coming up for you. Some of you have careers a little bit later in the semester. That's okay. You are more than welcome to come and chat with me. I'm happy to help you look at different things and research, um, and I'm sure your careers teacher will be happy to help you with that as well. You also have access to a personal planning chart on my blueprint. Please make good use of that as you can organize all of your courses. You can input um, different plans as well for different types of programs. So it's a great tool for you to use, um, especially if you're thinking about applying to different programs and you wanna compare whether or not you have the correct courses for those different programs, okay? Also notice, again, I've said this before, you have the choice of five electives this year. So Mr. Joven Injili already spoke to you about our specialist high skills major program. Um, you will need to take co-op if you are interested in pursuing SHSM. Please note that if you choose co-op, that accounts for two credits. So that will take the place of two of your elective credits. 
Um, if you are in grade 11, then you are eligible for this program. In the notes section, when you are on my blueprint, if you have selected co-op, please write down what area you are interested in as that will give us an idea of which areas um, are a little bit more popular and we can pass that information along to our co-op teachers. All right, some of you have been asking about the new ministry e-learning graduation requirement. So your cohort is expected to study two e-learning courses. It is a graduation requirement. There are 16 e-learning courses for you to choose from on my blueprint. Just type in e-learning and those courses will come up for you. However, if you are not fond of e-learning courses, then we do have an opt-out form so that that graduation requirement can be waived. The form has been included in your yellow package. It is the very last form. If you choose to opt out, you must have that form signed by your parents and return it to the guidance office as soon as possible. If you choose to complete two e-learning courses um, and perhaps you're thinking of taking something in summer school, then please note that that course must be asynchronous and um, it cannot be a part of a, a virtual school type of program in order for it to be used as one of the e-learning graduation requirement courses. All right, and finally, so we've gone through all the information. What do I need in order to be registered here with STM? Well, our deadline for registration is March 2nd, 2023. You're going to have to go online to my blueprint and select all of those courses. You have to go to the school cash online website and pay the activity fee. This year, the activity fee uh, will be $50. Okay, so note that for uh, the 2023-2024 school year, the activity fee will be $50. Please make sure that you keep a receipt confirming payment through School Cash Online. You wanna make sure you have that for your records and your parents have that, okay? And lastly, an email has been sent home to parents um, asking them to verify your registration uh, information, which basically is all of your personal information, your address, emails, uh, phone numbers. If any of that information has changed, please have your parents update that information uh, through the email address that has been attached to the um, email that has been sent home. Okay, guys, so this is it. Um, please refer to the yellow package that has been given to you. Okay, so this yellow package has all of the option advice information um, for you so that you can take a look at it, review it. Uh, this presentation will also be posted on the LMS page and you have your course selection instructions in this package as well. And lastly, the opt-out form if you choose not to take the two e-learning courses. All right. Great tens, have a wonderful day. Please come see me if you have questions. I'm happy to help you.